Hello and welcome to episode 60 of the Ortho Eval Pal podcast. I'm your host, Paul Markey. Today we're going to be talking about cervical spine arthritis. This is a topic I really like because these folks um, are the type of people that you can really help out in the clinic. Um, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what cervical spine looks like and how you treat it. But before we do that, I'd like to take a moment to hear a word from our sponsors. Welcome back and thank you so much for following Ortho Eval Pal. Today is episode 60. It just amazes me at how quickly this is going by and how much fun I'm having doing this. But before I get started today, I just want to say a few things. Uh, number one, thanks for following. And number two, I really apologize to those of you who have been leaving comments either on our um, website or uh, on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. We've had a tremendous number of comments. I've not been able to answer a lot of these comments lately. Uh, my father has been diagnosed with cancer and um, we just spent some time uh, down at the Dana-Farber Clinic in Boston and uh, doing a lot of traveling and, and taking care of uh, these types of things. Luckily, we've got some good news and uh, things are, are looking positive. So, um, so I apologize for not getting back to you folks. I really am back on track now and hope to uh, be able to give uh, give some feedback and uh, get to uh, some of the questions that you've had. And again, thank you all for such the positive um, feedback that you're giving me. Uh, it really helps uh, encourage me to continue doing what I'm doing, uh, which I totally love. And so, um, so let's talk a little bit about cervical spine arthritis. You know, we all see this, these people, they come in generally elderly population, but not always. They grab a hold of their neck. Their pain is very isolated to the cervical spine. They don't often complain of ridiculous symptoms, although they can have ridiculous symptoms with cervical spine arthritis. But today we're just going to talk about C-spine arthritis and what it is and how do we manage this. Um, usually these, these folks are complaining about, you know, they drive uh, to a stop sign. They have a difficult time looking up and down the road, left and right. They have to turn their body uh, in order to see where they're going. They can't back their cars up anymore. They need to use their rear view mirrors and and they just have this really really stiff cervical spine this really stiff look when they come into the office they don't like to be into extension so they generally fall into this cervical spine flexion posture uh, they complain of difficulty sleeping at night, you know, sometimes headaches. And, um, you know, like I said, generally these folks are a little bit older, so they may try heat. They may try ice. I've seen people try cervical spine collars, which really is not a great way to treat this. And I'll tell you why in just a bit. The other thing you're going to see with these folks is a lot of them have thoracic kyphosis, okay? So their shoulders are rounded forward. The head is pitched back a little bit to compensate for that kyphosis. So they have this kind of accentuated lumbar lordosis or a cervical lordosis, and, um, and, and that can contribute to this also. So what is cervical spine arthritis? Remember, we did some anatomy on the cervical spine, anteriorly have this large vertebral body, a disc in between these vertebral bodies to help support the front, okay? Posterior to that, we have the cervical spine, spinal canal, and then we have the facet joints, which help to support the posterior side of the cervical spine. Now, those facet joints, they take up a lot of pressure. They like to stay in a relatively neutral position, but they need to move. So what happens with arthritis is obviously the joint starts to break down like it would with arthritis anywhere else. As it starts to break down, you start to develop some pain. When you have pain, you stop moving. Okay, so you stop ranging your cervical spine, you stop ranging the neck. And as a result, you produce less synovial fluid for inside the joint. The joint becomes stiffer. It becomes stiffer. You move less. When you move less, the muscles don't function and work as well, and therefore they become tight. They become spasmed. And, and this just becomes this vicious circle that continues and continues and continues. And they all say, you know, that it just progressively got worse over time. Sometimes there's a mechanism. They develop pain in a facet and they stop moving and it just kind of, you know, snowballs into this significant loss of motion. What I look at the most with these folks is their cervical spine rotation. It's amazing. I had a lady the other day who came in and she had 15 degrees of total motion. That's not 15 degrees to the left and 15 degrees to the right. That was 15 degrees of total motion left and right. She was a fairly young lady, about 55 years old, and um, had a considerable amount of stress in her life that contributed to this um, loss of motion, upper trapezius tightness, um, and pain that just kind of continued uh, along with some depression. And this just snowballed into severe, severe tightness. And I really thought I was going to have my hands full with this lady. Um, 
But come to find out, most of the time, the facet capsules, that capsular tissue around the facet at multiple levels becomes stiff and tight. So they lose that ability to move, especially into rotation. Now, with these folks, uh, and I'll talk about treatment in a little bit, but these folks I don't like to extend very much because too much extension of the cervical spine will continue to agitate the joint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a moment here to uh, hear a word from our sponsor, and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how to treat cervical spine arthritis. Welcome back, everyone, and thanks for staying with me. We're going to talk a little bit now about how to treat cervical spine arthritis. So remember, number one, they lose cervical spine range of motion. Number two, they develop a significant amount of capsular tightness and joint discomfort posteriorly. Number three, they don't often have radicular symptoms in the, in the upper extremities, okay? They have this loss of extension, loss of rotation to both sides. They have difficulty with function. They don't sleep very well, okay? So if we take a look at these, the facet joint specifically, okay? And they will be tender in these facets. So that's that's another way to evaluate this is, you know, go start with the, um, the, the supraspinous process, move laterally on both sides, and you'll notice some tenderness right in those facet joints. And, and those people will have pain. People who have isolated herniated discs with radiculopathy don't generally have tenderness to touch posteriorly. Okay. So this is another way to identify there is some sort of a facet involvement going on here. So what kinds of things help with these folks? If they're generally the older population with arthritis, they do better with heat than they do with ice. I heat almost all of my cervical spine arthritis patients and they relax better, the muscles relax better, um, the patient relaxes, and then they allow us to work with their cervical spine a little bit better. These folks do well with some soft tissue mobilization. I'm going to work on their suboccipitals. I'm going to work on their upper traps, their levator scap muscles, their lateral cervical spine muscles, and try to get those to loosen up. Because remember, a tight upper trap will pull the head down into the cervical spine and compress it more. So what happens when it compresses it more? the facets get compressed more, all right? And when they're compressed more, they don't function very well, all right? The next thing I like to do is implement a thoracic kyphosis reduction program. I do this with almost all of my cervical spine patients, unless there's something else going on that doesn't allow it to happen, like a torn rotator cuff or bad shoulder, something like that. But I work on pectoral flexibility, pec minor, pec major flexibility. I try to get those shoulders back. We work on, 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 on scapular retraction exercises, all right? And that's to help bring the shoulders back so the cervical spine doesn't go into such a lordosis to cause more um, facet compression, all right? The other thing I like to do with these people is I love to um, give them a, a manual traction to their cervical spine. So a little inhibitive distraction and traction to the neck. They all love this. Okay, we take pressure off those facets. You take the pressure off the facets, they have less pain, they have less spasm. The neck starts to move better. So once we get in there, soften that up, do a little light manual traction. I like to work on cervical spine rotation. I don't work on flexion very often, and I don't work I, especially into extension. All right. And I'll talk to you, you know, about that in a little bit. But I really focus on the rotation. Number one, because of the orientation of the facets, they're more like plates on plates. Um, they don't get compressed so hard when you're rotating them. All right. So if you can improve that capsular mobility side to side with rotation, number one, the patient sees some pretty quick improvement as far as overall range of motion. And once they develop better capsular mobility into rotation, I found that they improve their lateral flexion better and their, their cervical spine flexion and extension also improve naturally. Okay, but I always lead with cervical spine rotation. And as far as the thoracic kyphosis reduction exercises go, um, I, I put them on that right away. Okay, and I'll have a link and I'll do a video for you folks on what I like to use for thoracic kyphosis reduction. So if you go into the show notes, um, you'll find a link to a short video that I'm going to put together for you um, just on what I like to use for thoracic kyphosis reduction exercises. Um, some people will tolerate mechanical traction. If they tolerate mechanical traction, by all means, go ahead and do it. Um, the older population, they don't seem to do as well with it, but if they do, great. By all means, go ahead and use it. Um, if they can tolerate a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, that can help decrease the inflammation in those facet joints and also make them a little more comfortable. 
And then lastly, I like to do deep cervical spine um, strengthening exercises so that it pushes the cervical spine into a more of a, a decreased lordotic position. So less lordosis. And, and by doing that, it opens up the facets. Okay. So like doing a chin tuck and contracting the deep cervical spine muscles opens up the facet joints and therefore they get less compression and they're less painful. And it's so rewarding to see these patients because almost all of them will show an improvement in range of motion. They'll be able to drive their vehicles better. You know, they'll be able to turn and look at folks better and, and generally have a decrease in pain. Um, and so that's why I like treating cervical spine. Now, um, sometimes these people will have an associated radiculopathy with it. And we've talked about cervical spine radiculopathy. I'm going to do some, uh, some episodes here about C5, 6, 7, 8, um, T1 and what those present like, what they look like. And I'm going to talk about those all individually so that um, you can really identify those and tease those out when you see these patients. But um, I hope you enjoyed today's show on cervical spine arthritis. It's something that we see commonly and it's very treatable uh, with conservative management. If they don't get better, sometimes consulting with somebody who does interventional injections can be uh, helpful. And uh, there are other techniques out there, but um, I've had really good success treating these folks and uh, and really enjoy it so um please tell your colleagues about ortho eval pal you know send them to our website and have them connect with us we'll get them on our uh, on our news uh letter list and uh that way they get information on new events and new things that we're doing and also make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel um i get uh, we are putting on videos all the time almost on a weekly basis now about different patients with different diagnoses and um please run over to uh, iTunes. If you're not already on iTunes, leave us a rating and review that really helps um, uh, give us uh, some momentum as far as um, podcasting goes. And um, we'll take some of those and uh, put those testimonials up on our website. So again, folks, thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you at episode 61.